So a little while ago, we took a look at a Serenova projector, the XPE 460. So unlike the XPE 460, native 720p. So let's check it out. Now what we find inside the projector as you go in, you can see that is the contents. There's no top packaging or anything like that. We won't find one remote. We get a power lead, same as the PCs, and we get the projector itself. Now one thing I was confused about, there was no instruction manual, nowhere in the box. Now having this sent from the manufacturer, that's the only reason I can think of missing instruction manual, so the retail version should be different. Now taking a look at the form factor compared to the uh, predecessor, the Serenova XP460, there is a massive size difference. This is a full size projector. So let's take a look at the actual focus and the keystone correction. Now as you can see it's got this ridged effect, it's rubberized and the uh, focus ring itself moves really smoothly. It does feel very sturdy and you know what it doesn't feel cheap in any way shape or form and it operates very smoothly. Now moving on to let's have a look at the uh, oh that's a bit tight. So this thing, the uh, this is what you'd call your keystone correction toggle. Now this thing is well made, I'll give it that, but it's quite hard to adjust. So located on the top left hand corner you've got your directional control, up, down, left, right. They are quite clicky and they've got a centre push button which has got a metallic finish and it does scroll. So you can actually cycle this to get through to different options. Nice. Another great feature about this projector where some of the cheaper ones have a threaded foot that you have to screw in and adjust like that. You've got a button on this one, as you press it it releases a kickstand and it's got a little rubber pad on the bottom of the kickstand and when you flick it round you can actually adjust your vertical uh, projector viewing angle, which is nice. Flick it back round, and if you push this button in, it's got a little release, so push, and it goes down. So you can micro-adjust it into three points. Now this is an area where the projector is let down. As you can see from the rear ports, you can see the RCA inputs, you've got two USB 1.0 ports, an Ethernet jack, a headphone jack, and the power button on the bottom, and that's it. The small circular next to the 3.5mm jack is your infrared port for your remote control. There's no HDMI, but with the built-in Wi-Fi and the fact that code is already pre-installed, you really don't need it. Now if you wanted to hook this up to your PlayStation or Xbox, you could quite easily use an RCA to HDMI converter that you can pick up off Amazon for about 4 or £5. Pounds. So that's enough of that. I'm going to power on the projector. I've got it all set up, all level, with the screen. And we're going to play a couple of uh, YouTube clips at 720p just to show you. So here's the menu screen, how it looks like. You can add more apps. And let's find YouTube. So to find YouTube, you have to go into My Apps. And as you can see, I've downloaded a few things. Click onto YouTube and we're going to play a video. So, what shall we play? Seeing as I love tech, there's a vertical keystone correction. Hope that helps you if you want to ask that question. I've got the uh, camera lens focused. I'm going to I'm recording this on a Canon 50mm lens. It's a prime lens and this is as good as I can get it. So, let's find something to play. So again, this is one of those situations where the camera cannot do it justice. Now, i got to tell you, the picture is superb. Standing one foot away from a projector screen with a 50mm prime lens, the picture is still really watchable. Now, what you do have to remember is that this projector is running Android 4.1, I believe, and it's only got 1 gig of RAM. So certain versions of Kodi, like 17.1, and the latest versions will not install because it doesn't have the uh, horsepower to power it. So I'm downloading and installing Kodi 14.1 or 14.2. I can't remember the build number, but as you can see, it's downloading and installing the version that I know, and I know it's stable, and I know it all works. So this is going to take a few minutes due to the one gig of RAM, but the fact is, the Wi-Fi is rock solid. Now, when I was on YouTube, it was playing superb. So the process of installing my version of Kodi took around five minutes, and that, for me, it was brilliant. So now from here, you just download all your add-ons that you're used to. For me, it's Exodus, and if it's on this version, I'll be very happy. So we're gonna test out some video from Kodi, and we're gonna try and play a 720p HD file to see how it performs. So now I've uh, downloaded and installed HD trailers. This is playing at 720p. And this is a little trailer of, I believe, uh, Avengers. Um, one thing I did notice as I'm watching is that the corners of the uh, image is a little bit out of focus. And the other thing that I notice is because of the uh, lack of space in my lounge, I can only have the screen, like I said, up around 135 inches, but I can't change the aspect ratio. It doesn't have a 16.1 or anything else. It is fixed to what it is. There's no options in the menu to change that, but within the menu, you can actually change the projector brightness contrast, and you can uh, adjust a few other settings as well, which is really handy.
And finally, what I did to see how powerful this projector was with this one gig of RAM is downloaded a game. This is Shadow Fight 2. Now, this is one of the most popular games on Google Play at the moment. Um, I have it on my Android smartphone, and I wanted to know if it would even run. So that was my test. So I downloaded it and installed it, and this is how it went. Check it out. I don't know if either, any one of you have actually played this game. This is actually quite good. It really does pass the time. So I'm the one on the left. I've got my joystick control, which I'm controlling with my mouse, which isn't ideal because you have to like move the directional control and click the punch and kick buttons at the same time. But I'm playing on easy level, guys, so I did win. But it does play, but as you can see, the speed of it is just ridiculous. Now, if you were to play small games or simple games like something like Candy Crush, It'll run absolutely fine, but this is a little bit more demanding, but I was just surprised it ran it. So guys, that is the end of my review. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments what you think, and I'm edging towards a thousand subscribers. So if you've watched this video and you've made it this far, be sure to leave a like, drop a comment and subscribe. And when I hit my thousand subscriber, I'm going to be giving exactly this projector away. So be sure to hit that like button and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next video.